I've developed my own advanced methods for sharpening my landscape images in Photoshop. Usually when you're taught to sharpen, it only applies to a certain subject matter or a certain scene. But I'm going to teach you the concept behind my method so that you're able to tackle any scene in any subject matter with confidence. I'm also going to show you the tools to negate the negative artifacts that happen with sharpening. That way your result is going to be super clean. This method is a little bit advanced and a little bit in depth, but you can always replay the sections that you need help with. The results are exceptional, so I do encourage you to stick with it and try it out. Let's jump straight into it. All right, let's talk about the image real quick. So this was taken towards sunset at a beautiful location in Cornwall. I really fell in love with the texture of the rocks. So I decided to get in close to them and compose the image in this way. Now, with the sharpening that we're going to employ, I really want to bring life and add a little bit more pop to the rocks. So not only the rocks in the foreground over here, but the midground and some of the rocks here in the cliff face in the background. So what that means when it comes to sharpening is that we're not going to have a global method for sharpening the entire image. We're going to actually break the image down into three sections. We're going to have the large fidelity of the rocks in the foreground, the midground, and the cliff face here as being small. This means that we're going to employ three different strategies for each plane. One global strategy isn't going to work for bringing out the detail in all these rocks. Okay, so I've created three layers that we're going to look at for each plane. And let's zoom in here for the small details in the background. So what we're going to do over here is just focus on this cliff face in the background. And we're going to add a high pass filter. This is going to be the main method for, for sharpening this photo. So go to filter, other, and high pass. And what we want to do over here is move the radius slider until you start to see the image come to life in its own fidelity. It's kind of hard to explain, but once you do this for yourself, you'll know exactly what I mean. You essentially want this high pass filter to make an outline of the details that are there in that plane. So for instance, we can see here at, at 52 radius, that's a little bit too much, but if we start to bring this down to somewhere around about, yeah, around about around about six, seven pixel radius seems to be good. And that is really highlighting the, the, the detail in that rock face, just the way I, I want it. So, okay, cool. Now with that employed, we're just gonna press okay. And then we're gonna add a black mask to it by holding down alt and clicking on the mask icon and change the blending opacity for soft light. Now let's do the same for the medium fidelity. Okay, now let's push the radius up because we want to focus on just the midground over here. So let's look at this rock face over here. Okay, and just keep going until it starts to take shape a, a little bit better. Yeah, I think around about, around about 15 seems good. So cool, let's hit okay on that and add a black mask to that and change the, sh the blending mode to soft light. One more time with the large fidelity. Okay. Around about 40 pixel radius seems good to me. Once again, add a black mask to that layer and add soft light. And now all we're gonna do is go in and paint that detail in the separate sections, right? So on the small layer, we'll go in here and with a white brush on this black mask, we're just gonna go in and paint along the cliff face over here. Now have a quick look at that. That's doing quite a nice job. Okay, good stuff. Now we just do the rest of the layers and then we'll see the before and after of what it's done. All right, I finished painting in the masks and I'm smiling because the difference is really awesome. Have a look for yourself. Look how much pop is created in the rock face, especially in the foreground. So here's with the sharpening off and here's with the sharpening on. Once again, off and on. Look at the pop. It's insane. Like this added so much texture and detail and structure to the foreground. It's really brought this image to life now. It's as though you're standing right there. But what can we do to make it even better? 
Well, if you over sharpen something in the background or the mid ground, you start to lose a little bit of depth because when it comes to actual sort of physics, you don't have the objects in the background as sharp as you would in the foreground, depending on your scenario. But in this case, that is how it is. So what we want to do is just lower the opacity a little bit on the sharpening in the background. So we can see this cliff face is, is looking really good. But hey, let's take the opacity from 100% to 80%. And then let's go to the mid ground. And let's take that from 100% to 90%. So essentially just 10% less for every plane. This is not a rule or anything like that. It's just it's just something that you need to sort of judge for yourself when you're doing this method. But that just ensures that the the rock faces don't have equal sharpness from front of the image to the back and helps retain a little bit of depth. Even then with this group layer, you can lower the opacity to taste for your sharpening. So for you guys at home, I'm gonna keep it at 100%, but for you, you may want to lower that itself right to something like maybe 50 percent you'll need to judge this one for yourself but for you guys at home i'm going to keep it 100 percent. even though we've sharpened all three planes separately and it's given a very very nice result so far we need to understand that we've actually still sharpened the entire tonal range so from the darks to the lights when you tend to sharpen the dark areas the, your image could look a little bit muddy. So what we're going to do next is create a luminosity mask where we're going to eliminate the shadows from our sharpening. That way we're still going to retain the structure because that's essentially what I believe comes out of the midtones and the highlights, but not make the image look too muddy. Just interrupting to say that I've created my own 16-bit luminosity masks actions for you guys. So you don't need all the fancy panels and premium products to get the luminosity masks. All you need to do is follow the link in below to grab the actions. It's a .atn file. Then you need to go into Photoshop and load up the actions and install them via the actions panel. Let's jump into that real quick so I can show you what it looks like. Go over here to the actions, click on the burger menu icon, go to load actions, Go to the directory that you've downloaded the actions to and it's called Jethro's Luminosity Masks. Just click that, say load, and there you go. Remember to use the remove LM action when you want to save your Photoshop file. Having the luminosity mask sitting in your channel adds to the weight of your file. You don't really need that and you can always just generate the luminosity masks if and when needed. Let's resume. Let's create a stamp visible layer. So what you do is you just have a layer selected and you press Control, Alt, Shift and E or Command, Option, Shift and E on a Mac. And what that does is it creates a layer of everything combined. Now go to your actions and create the 16-bit luminosity masks on that stamp visible layer. Wait for it to load. Go to your channels panel and you'll see that it's loaded the brights, the darks and the midtones. Now you're going to hit dark six and you're going to press this little icon down below that says load the channel as a selection. Go back to your layers and press the mask icon on this stamp visible layer. Now what you're going to need to do is actually make the sharpened group invisible because we no longer need it. Now, what you're going to do is hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and click on the mask. And that will actually show you the preview of it. And as you can see here, only the very darkest areas are white, which means that they are selected. Now, what we want to do is enhance this and, and bring it more white than it is gray. So what you're going to do is open up a levels adjustment for this. So Command L or Option L on a Mac. And you're going to take this point over here on the right and bring it all the way in. Now, let's take this black point here to, from the left and also shift it into the right a little bit more. Just like that. 
So now you can see that only the very darkest areas are white, which is perfect. And that's what we need. Press OK to that. Now we need to invert this, right? So Command or Option I. So now you see that the sharpening will not be applied to the very darkest areas, which is exactly what we want. And you've still retained the contrast without muddying up the image at all. In the intro, I hinted that there might be some negative artifacts of sharpening, and there really are. What it essentially does is create a white halo around the edges and also a black halo on the inside of the edge. This is a symptom of sharpening your images with a high pass filter. Let me show you what I mean. When we created the high pass filter earlier, we did this method and this is something you can't avoid. But as you can see over here, you clearly have the white halo on the outside of the edge and the black halo on the inside of the edge. Usually people counteract this by lowering the radius. But as we discovered, we want the higher radius to bring out the detail. So it's really a simple fix though. All you need to do is just take a black paintbrush on your mask and paint it away along the edges and you'll start to see it disappearing, right? So here we can see that we have the black halo on the inside and the white halo on the outside. Just take a black paintbrush and a paint along the edges to eliminate it from the edges. This allows us to negate the negative artifacts, but still retain all the beautiful detail of the method that we've done for sharpening. You are usually taught to sharpen your images at lower levels and on a global scale. This is to avoid the negative artifacts that come with over sharpening your images or sharpening them at higher fidelities. But I've just taught you the techniques to avoid the negative artifacts, avoiding the haloing around the edges and the muddiness that comes with sharpening the entire tonal range. Avoiding the shadows is a key to retaining a cleaner result in your sharpening. Now, sharpening doesn't just sharpen the fine details, but it adds a whole lot of structure and three-dimensionality to your subject. I really hope that you see this technique as being a useful tool in creating images that just pop a little bit more. I hope you like my sharpening method. Hopefully it's gonna help you with your photography editing. If you guys would subscribe, like, or leave a comment, that would be appreciated. Have a good one.